Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of R&D, here where we discuss uh, latest theories, predictions, upcoming events, so on and so forth. I'm your host, Raging Anybody, and today I have with me... Novi BITW 89. All right, so uh, we're going to get into it with the first thing on our list is the Loki season finale. Uh... I posted a poll the, uh, earlier in the week and uh, to see what you guys thought of the season overall, I got a kind of a lot of negative responses, and you guys didn't really like the like the season. It looks like so, um, but you know what? I I loved it. I, I thought it was it. great. It was I thought complex. it was yeah. It was uh, it was just as good as the first one uh, compared to all the other Marvel shows that came out recently. Oh my God, Secret Invasion. <laughs> uh, you know, it was definitely top notch uh, uh, for me, and I mean. It was consistent, it was well done, like uh, uh, the special effects, the acting, everything like that. They actually, I feel like, took their time and made a quality show and not just tried to rush some, some, something out just so they can have something for phase, what are we now, six? <laughs> it's five or six? I think we're at five. Okay. Um, <laughs> Who knows what phases anymore? But uh, I also want to say I, well, we... We're right about our predictions. I mean, almost every single one of them that we made earlier uh, turned out true. Like, yeah. it was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Called the montage, but the mont well, the one thing I would say, I, I was a little bit wrong, or maybe we were, was just saying, like, maybe the, they would be, in like, taking turns. Like, oh, we're not going to send out Victor. We're going to send out Mo Movius now. But no, it was just the same thing over and over again. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as soon as I watched it, I'm, I'm sitting next to Sammy, and I'm just like, "Fucking knew it! I called it!" Yeah. <laughs> it. Uh, I mean, I I love that he, and, and the, I love the fact that he also like, right, you know, started off doing that loop. Okay, that's not working. Let me go a little earlier. Okay, that's still not working. Let me go a little earlier. So not, and then it's like centuries later, you know, after <laughs> you know he's tried. I mean, whereas Doctor Strange sat there and did his little magic spell and saw. You know, I don't know if he actually lived through several different lifetimes at that point, but he saw the 14 million point whatever, whatever uh, instances about uh, Infinity War and Endgame, yeah. right? Uh, like, Loki lived them. <laughs> <laughs> he lived them. And I love it, too, because when you finally, when he, you know, goes back to, uh, uh, to the moment in time where uh, Sylvie kills He Who Remains, right? And then he who remains is like, oh, you haven't learned how to stop time yet, and all this stuff like that. And Loki just does it, and he's like, you know, and it and it catches him off guard for a second when Loki d delivers that quote by T. S. Eliot. You know, he who remains just kind of looks at him like, oh shit, you have been at this, like, you know, what, like maybe maybe I underestimated you a little bit, yeah. you know. And uh, I mean, it. it proves out to be true because Loki, you know, he's like, oh, you can either, you know, let her kill me, all this shit falls apart, and, and you deal with that, or, you know, whatever, uh, you stop her from killing me and we rule together, and Loki is like, how about I just replace you entirely, you know, uh, you don't even exist, you know, because, now, the, a lot of people still think that he, that Victor Timely was he who remains, and maybe there's no definitive proof he isn't i still don't think he is i don't think he is but they do make it a point to show the scene uh of you know young victor making his candles and shit and nobody drops the book right so that means he who remains never remains or is it just that you know victor timely never exists that that he just destroys that particular loop he who remains would still be a factor because otherwise because it doesn't seem like Loki changed the past then. He continued the timeline forward. So all that He Who Remains does have to exist. Yeah. So they're just pruning the other Kangs out of existence, which I was also right on. I knew they were going to become Kang Hunters. Um, but yeah, uh, I like that. I, I like how it played out, that that he basically like made a third option. You know, and it was like... Uh, uh, and then, you know, weaves the timelines into the, the, the big old Yggdrasil tree, you know, uh, the tree of life from all Norse mythology. Um, the other thing I want to touch on is also, 
a lot of people were all talking about what does it mean with uh, uh, Loki when he before he learned how to time slip when he was uh, you know he gave Ob the TVA handbook and this and that and stuff. I don't think any of that matters. I think uh, while while I know I just said that he kept the whole hero remains timeline intact and stuff. I think that part of this, that part of the jumping back and forth he erased that that never happened. That does or it, it if it does. It led to another alternate reality, which he also kept and wove into the thing. But that is not how... I don't think that is their official origins anymore. I, I think that no. that doesn't matter. You know, we'll, we'll probably never learn their official origins because it's one of those things like uh, Joker in the Dark Knight, you know, I always do my scars, you know, type of shit. It's always a different story because millions of different things played into a, to it, you know, and that it could have been any one of them given that it's a multiverse but um yeah i don't think i don't think any of that stuff matters no i don't think it matters either i think it was just more of a network. yeah um it just served oops, it just served a purpose of getting loki to figure out you know how to time slip you know part of kang's plan but he erased kang's plan so none of that matters i guess <laughs> um i i uh, i do love that, uh, like I said, I, I mean, I didn't know if maybe OB would go back and write a book or something. That would have been kind of cool, too. But I do love that it was Mobius who decided to... He did, well, he doesn't really go back to his life. He goes back and checks on his life, but then he you know, tells Sylvie, he's like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to chill here and, and figure shit out for a minute, you know. And I wonder what, what she's going to do now. Like, she obviously isn't staying at the TVA, or maybe she goes back to the TVA and, and helps hunt down Kangs, but it seems like she's taking the, the blessing from Loki and is like, I'm going to go find my own life. I wonder if she goes back to McDonald's. I was just about to say, <laughs> I, mean, I think she just went back to McDonald's. She's flipping burgers again. I mean, it is a simple life, you know. Uh, uh, she seemed to have a really nice nice life there. She had friends. She had the, the guy at the record store. His name was Lyle, too. Did you notice yes, that? Yes, I did. Yeah. Uh, and she had him at the record store, and she had uh, Jack, you know, her little young boy manager. Um, I mean, it was a quiet and, I mean, what else do you want? It's, it's Ohio, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. A quiet Ohio life. Right. Um also love the nod to Kang from Quantum Mania, uh, the where they talk right, right before Mobius leaves, where they're like, "Oh, we had an issue there, but it looks like they took care of it and stuff." And I love that they call it six one six adjacent, because the quantum realm is its own thing, right? But it's it's attached to the six one six universe. So that makes me wonder: Are there universes out there that don't have a quantum realm? Like in the comics, there's a realm where people can't die like there is no death like death died and so everybody else can't die you know that means there is no time and no whatever so and the, that's pretty much what the quantum realm well i don't know uh, how to exactly the quantum realm isn't time itself too but it ha whatever it has all those properties in it yeah. and stuff but but yeah so I, I wonder if like maybe like universes like that don't have certain realms then you know like there are realms in in marvel uh that are like there's a single version of uh, uh uh what the hell is it called the uh the the universe that the fantastic four go to to get their power it starts with the end i want to say negaverse but that's like no. that's like some anime or something <laughs> probably <laughs> you know uh whatever it, it's it's the void let's, let's i'll just call it the void for the purposes of this video but there there's only one of those you know, the one dark dimension. There's not multiple dark dimensions. There's only one dark dimension, right? But there's multiple Valhalla's. There's multiple Asgard's. Those are also technically realms outside of yeah. whatever, right? So does that mean, uh, you know, does the quantum realm, maybe there just doesn't exist in some timeline. That'd be kind of cool. That'd be really, really cool. It's just like its own entity. Yeah, you know, like its <laughs> own pocket reality, right? Um... Do you think we'll see Mobius again in Deadpool 3? I would love to see Mobius again in Deadpool 3, even if it's just like a little cameo. I don't think he's going to, if he is going to be in Deadpool 3, I don't think it's going to be anything like major. Jet ski Mobius? Yeah, just like there's a fight scene and they come by like out of nowhere, just a fight scene, go across like a jet ski shop, and then he's just like, wow. And yeah. then, like, and then <laughs> that's it. 
<laughs> I could see that. Um, what about a TVA spinoff? Uh, I don't think there needs to be a... Uh, I can see how they could do it, but I don't think we need a TV thing. Well, what do, what do you have in mind? Well, uh, I know they haven't announced a Loki Season 3. Now, that's probably because Loki's story is going to play out through Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, Secret Wars. Um, so that's probably what's going to happen there. And I mean, Tom Hiddleston can't play the character forever. However, the TVA is going to be playing a major part also in Deadpool 3 and Kang Dynasty. And I believe they also said in the Fantastic Four movie. Right? So, a branching series that just deals with that, like, to fill in... Because essentially that's what Loki did, right? It filled in the gaps between some of the films and stuff. A branching series about the TVA filling in, what they're doing, how their hunts for the Kangs are going, you know. You know, would be kind Because... The... While Thanos did get his slow drip introduction throughout Phase phase one phase two phase three until he finally showed up in infinity war right uh thanos is not really a complex character that needs a lot of description right big purple dude angry can beat the crap out of you wants to destroy half the universe for some you know whatever insane reason right kang on the other hand is there's with all the variants and the complex backstories he needs a little bit you know either his own movie or something like the TVA, or like a show about uh, taking place with the TVA, where you show them hunting down the various Kangs, and we get his backstory through the the different variants of Kangs as they're hunting him down. You know. Yeah. But... A lot of people say that that diminishes Kang's like ferocity or whatever. But the thing is, you know, just because you kill a bunch of versions of him, those are weaker versions. You know, there is one ultimate at the end. You know what I mean? And uh, that's what, you know, yeah, you know. Uh, I don't know how to say it. Like, you've, you've, you've read comics where, where, where you know, Hulk versus Wolverine, Hulk versus Thor, and stuff like that. Now, just because Hulk loses one fight, but then wins the other, does that diminish your respect for Hulk's strength? No. No. And so with Kang, I feel like that's the same thing same concept in my head is yeah he might lose against these avengers in this universe you know because they were willing to make this sacrifice or this choice but in another universe he uses that against them or or they don't make that choice and that's how he ends up winning you know that doesn't diminish i feel like that doesn't diminish his villainy or his ability to be a badass villain you know i mean uh, uh, you had in the Fantastic Four comics, uh, you had uh, the Council of Reeds kidnapping Doctor Dooms all around the uh, the multiverse and lobotomizing them, right? But there, it still ended with God King Doom sucking the power out of the Beyonder and fucking ruling the end of time. You know what I mean? He still became the most menacing threat there ever was. You know, I don't know. How do you feel about? I don't say it diminishes so much, like that aspect of it for me i think i don't think we need a a tba show i think that we've seen kang enough that i think that the next time we see kang should just be the kang dynasty yeah because i feel like almost it's like wearing out it's like okay we've seen kang so much can we just get kang already yeah you know what i mean yeah like it's cool to see him yeah it is like i'll admit it yeah but it's like let's just get you know let's let's get to it See, I, it's just that he, I like his Kang the Conqueror, the end game of that, you know. Yeah. He, to me, he's actually the least interesting version of him. I want to see Ramatut. I want to see the Scarlet Centurion. I want to, you know, I want to see those see versions of him, you know. So that's kind of why I want, I mean, maybe they all show up in the Kang Dynasty, but then I don't want the the film to feel, uh, you know, like every every big Marvel movie has a villain problem, kind of, because it's it's a bad guy and then tons of henchmen, you know, and we spend 90% of the movie battling the henchmen and then, like, a 10-minute fight at the end with the villain. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see any of the variants of Kangs turned into henchmen. I'm worried that that's what's going to okay, happen in the Kang that aspect, I can see it. I want them to be all their own unique villains that are causing... 
issues. Does that make sense? Yes. In that aspect, then I can possibly see a TV. I highly doubt that's going to happen, though, but I can see it, the possibility, but... I still watch it. Right. <laughs> I, I mean, we, there, are th there are some questions they left unanswered. For example, what do you think is going to happen to Renslayer? Last thing we saw is her looking up, and big old Eliath was like, oh, I'm going to eat you. <laughs> I think Renslayer, I think... I think she's dead. I think she's dead. Like, she's gone. <laughs> like, no more. That's it. Like, a lot of people are like, well, story. she has all this and this left, and I'm like, I don't think they're touching on that. I don't think... Uh, just like they didn't do the whole death and Thanos love storyline there, I don't think they're going to do that with uh, Renslayer and Kang either. I think her her arc is complete. She played the role she had in her story. She, you know, would, tried to, you know, be a foil or whatever. I, I don't know. I, I just... I just don't see her as an important character going forward. No, I don't either. You know, unless the only way I could see her coming back is Loki realizing maybe that there was some sort of feelings and, like, goes back and gets another variant of Renslayer. You know, like, maybe the one that helped him win the war or something like that before her mind was erased. And, like tells her what's about to happen and then uses her against Kang somehow as like a, you know, as a, as a pawn or whatever. Yeah. Maybe that, but otherwise I don't think, I don't think that Ransler. Yeah, yeah, I don't think she's going to matter otherwise. I don't think we're going to see you again. Um, let's see what else we got in here. Uh, oh, yeah. When, when Loki... And Sylvie, when they were at the, the end of whatever time and, and she was about to kill He Who Remains, at no point does he ever just enchant her and show her everything he sees or he saw. That, that, that seems a little bit like a missed opportunity that something that Loki would have at least thought of doing. Yeah. Or that she would have done at one point, touched him and been like, I'm going to read your brain. Because when... Uh, when, if you remember earlier in the season, when they had Brad trying to, when they were trying to find Sylvie in the first place at that McDonald's, right? Uh, Brad started stammering like, "Well, this, this, this has happened," and she just walked right up to him, grabbed him, read his mind, and was like, "Okay, I know what's going on." Yeah. You know, when Loki starts acting weird, she should have the first thing she should have been like, "Wait a minute," and then just read his mind, you know, and then seen the truth. I mean, it would, I don't know how that would have played out, but with everything that happened, like when he's going back to that exact time. Everything's in the heat of the moment. The only thing on her mind is to kill. <laughs> That's the only thing. So I don't even think he's thinking of, because I don't even think she even realized, like she does realize, but still like even in the moment doesn't realize that he just time slipped to that point. Right. Because he was there. So, so it's like. She's acting on emotion rather than rational. Exactly. Thought. But, then but she, she totally could have. But then he should have done it. He should have just been like, "Sylvie, stop!" And then been like, <laughs> <laughs> "He literally had a montage full of chances." To yeah, do it. <laughs> right. He should have just grabbed her head and just started interjecting his thoughts. But then again, I mean, maybe he didn't do it because she didn't trust him, or you know, it was at that point she didn't believe him yet, or I don't know. Um, it just felt like it was a missed opportunity, or the writers didn't think about it. Um. Let's see. What else we got here? Oh. Well, do you think uh, uh, what do you, what do you think is going to uh, now happen then uh, with uh, uh, Deadpool three? As far as uh, uh, we saw, you know, whatever, all the timelines woven together, everything exists. We know that Deadpool, or at least as far as rumors go, Deadpool is going to cross multiverses or something right because the tva is hunting him because he's playing with cables little time time travel device yeah. right and he's going to whatever grab a bunch of people uh, um <laughs> take them with him i guess i i think what's what this is leading up to uh f as far as an introduction for the uh, the x-men in the mcu i think what they're going to do is kind of like uh uh, consolidated version of Avengers vs. X-Men. Yeah, they are starting to do the whole mutant thing, so like the whole, yeah. Yeah, because otherwise, I mean, if they save that for a later date, I don't know if that'll make any sense, 
Uh, but right now, like, you know, if there's, like, incursions happening and blah, 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 because Deadpool was messing around, he grabs whatever X-Men he can, he heads into our universe, and the Avengers are like, whoa, 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 whoa. You can't just show up here, you can't, whatever. I mean, we already have that with the Skrulls and the, the, the Asgardians, and the shit ain't gonna fly, right? And stuff, and then that leads into a, like, we're just looking for a home, it's your fault that you, you know, you destroyed our planet by, because your Doctor Strange did this and that, you know, whatever leads to it and then it's like i said the plot plays out then avengers versus x-men you'll get um whoever's left you know <laughs> hulk thor whatever and stuff plus the new avengers right that are forming like uh, uh ms marvel captain marvel so and so forth right and they team up to whoop ass against like you know wolverine beast and, and whoever uh um i think essentially that's how that plot's go like there is not I don't think there's going to be a a villain in Deadpool three. I'm just wait, waiting for Mister Sinister. <laughs> I, I do but, want to see the. I do, but no. but that they need to they need to have like they need to build the X Men into our world. I don't think Mister Sinister is coming until like after Secret. Wars. Oh yeah, no, no, no. Uh, the same with like apocalypse. Please don't bring don't bring apocalypse in yet. Uh, Again. Again. <laughs> save some of those guys for like like the big the big team up movies later on down the road. Uh, I don't want to see them just randomly show up in a in a in a in a dog fight and then Hulk just comes in and and then that's over. You know, I, I, <laughs> that would feel like a waste. It's the same way I feel about when people are talking about you know because uh, of the news uh, about. Jonathan Majors and when the way they were, you know, like, well, if he gets arrested, you know, goes to jail, then we got to figure out what to do, blah, 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 right? And people are like, oh, they're going to bring in Dr. Doom. No, don't. Dr. Doom, first of all, he's a great villain and very underutilized in many of the Marvel movies so far. But secondly, if you bring him in now and he does, and he becomes the end boss for Secret Wars, I mean, yes, I know it's like the comics, but if he becomes the, the end boss to Secret Wars, you cannot go anywhere from there. That is the top tier level of, you know, villainy for Doom. It would all be downhill. Like, the, the building robots and protecting a little city and battling the Fantastic Four ain't gonna be shit compared to him ruling the multiverse. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, no, it's too early for Doctor Doom to make an appearance, you know. However, if they want to bring him in to start as a good guy, like, he like before like he's like you know because they want to bring in the fantastic four before the movies right they, they as far as i understand they want to release the fantastic four movie between kang dynasty and secret wars right so they could uh, you know like shit could be hitting the fan after kang uh, kang dynasty and stuff and reed goes up you know victor i need your help you know and they team up and then he betrays them throughout and so and so forth you know like after they defeat Maybe there'll be God King Kang or something at the end. Who knows? Whatever. And then he betrays him and, and, was, and tries to figure out how to use that power from that on, you know, into the next movies. That w I could understand that if they want to introduce Doom that way. But to just bring him in and make him the, the villain right away, I think, would be a waste. Yeah. You need more build up. Right. Now, I know you told me you haven't seen the Marvels yet. I have. Um, Been a busy weekend. <laughs> Wait a minute, what's going on here? I'm, uh... Oh, I lost my place in here? Yes. This is part of the... Loki. The Loki stuff. Oh, I do, I do love that they also bring back Miss Minutes, and then, oh, and she's like, is she gonna try to, you know, B-15's all like, is she gonna try to kill everybody? And will be just like, well, like <laughs> I gave her her full sentience. Well, now, what would be cool is if she becomes instrumental in taking down Kang or taking down the Kangs, you know what I mean? Like, they could give her most of her memories back, you know, and be like, you know, Kang rejected the hell out of you. She hates him above everyone else. Like, she would probably put her differences aside, maybe, just to help eradicate him from every timeline. Right, I was know? like, I'm not doing this for you. <laughs> I, think that, I, I think that could be it. Also, before we get into the Marvels, I also think when we reach Secret Wars, 
Loki will be the one assembling the multiversal Avengers. I think that's what his role, what what they're making him up. Like everybody's gonna, like, you know, like Thor, even like the Thor core. I don't know if you ever read the Secret Wars stuff. So the Thor core is basically a bunch of Thors from all the different realities forming a giant army of Thors. Right, so <laughs> they even take on like a, a, the, the Marvel zombies from that universe and stuff. It's okay. crazy. Right. Anyways, um, I think that, you know, Loki is, you know, whatever, and they're going to think, oh, he's the villain, you know, like the, the Avengers or whatever, and stuff, what have you brought us here and stuff like that, and he's going to be like, relax, I need your help. I'm not here to do anything evil, this is this, and blah, 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 you know, and it's going to be Thor who's going to be the voice of whatever, compassion, reason, whatever you want to call it, you know, and who turns to the rest of the Avengers and be like, He's my brother. I believe him. Yeah, you know. it's like I know when he's lying. Right, he's and not stuff lying. like that. And then, they, <laughs> they, then, and then you know, together they hop through whatever realities and pick out the strongest Avengers of those timelines and then form form a team. Um, I do wonder though, because they kind of did something similar in What If, right? When uh, the Watcher formed a, a multiversal Avengers team to to stop you know Six Stone, Ult- Infinity Ultron, you know, or, or whatever. Um, would seem kind of repetitive if they did it again, right? Unless Loki co-ops that team, yeah. you know? And, like, I don't know. Um, for all I know is that what if is its own thing, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, that it doesn't matter to the main MCU timeline? No. I don't know. Um, Marvel has been a little bit in a disarray when it came to the last phase and stuff like that. I think they had a plan. That plan went awry, and now they're trying to reassemble the pieces, and they're like, you know what, we are going to break the universe anyway, so we can just fix it after. And, you know, I think that's their whole game plan and stuff, but uh, it still needs to make sense, guys. It still needs to make sense to the lead-up of that. You know, you can't just hand-wave a lot of that stuff. Although, I mean, when, when it comes to time travel and stuff, even like with What If, they could just say, well, that takes place after Secret Wars. You know, or, I don't know. I, I just feel like having multiple mul- multiple multiversal Avengers teams is kind of redundant. Yeah. Um, let's see here. All right, so back to the Marvels. Let's, let me find my place here. Um, so, in the movie, uh, uh, the big uh, plot revolves around the Bangles. The, the quantum bands that uh, uh, Ms. Marvel has one, we, as we saw in her show, and, uh, and in the movie, uh, uh, um, Dar Ben, the, the Cree uh, uh, pirate lady, whatever you want to call her, uh, Cree general, she finds the other one, right? And she starts ripping holes in, in space and time, and uh, this is what causes the whole body switching and, and, and et cetera, et cetera. Now, from comics, if you know what the quantum bands are, you know, then you'll be familiar with, like, characters like Quasar and so on and so forth. They work differently <laughs> than they do in the movies. In the movies, they are essentially teleportation devices. They, they created the first jump points, the first mass effect drives, whatever you want to call it, you know what I mean? They allowed... Uh, you know, I forgot what the name of them, the, the Jinn, essentially, I think. Uh, they allowed them to travel across the cosmos, uh, uh, whatever, before some Kree came along, was like, yo, we want that, killed them, and tried to steal that stuff. Um, but they don't really go into much else explanation for it. They just kind of say, oh, I thought these were an ancient myth, you know. And um, they, they, were, they, they didn't say if the jinn or whatever created those they just know we just know that they used them uh because and the way the reason i say this is because they found them in the in a in a dig site for the 10 rings or with or with the 10 rings logo in there right so the, the same 10 rings you saw in the shang chi movie um those clearly have very different markings on them but apparently they all belong together in my opinion, I think it's all celestial tech. I think it, it doesn't necessarily mean that Fastos from the Eternals uh, uh, created them or anything, but I, 
I do believe they are remnants of celestial tech. Uh, 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 maybe, or, or it's remnants of a, a previous herald of Galactus. Now, we, you know, the most famous herald of Galactus is obviously Silver Surfer. Everybody knows who Silver Surfer is. Um, but before him, there were others, right? Who's to say that it wasn't one of the, the djinn, and then that technology was given to him so he could be, you know, that he could harness the power cosmic, you know, and, and go and warn planets, and he ended up, you know, as he was going to our star system or whatever, you know, the Kree surprise attack, you know, and then he died. And he crashed on Earth and, you know, Green Lantern style left his his, his jewelry behind. <laughs> you know, for somebody else to pick up and stuff. And then Galactus was just like, you know what, screw that, screw the technology. The next guy I meet, I'm just going to put the, the power cosmic into him, you know, and then, you know, we got Silver Surfer. That is... Oh, theory. <laughs> you know, other than that, like I said, other my other theory is only that it, it has to be something with celestial tech. It has to be from from them. Like they are the most advanced beings in the universe or in the multiverse, even right. So, and ever like they literally. I mean, the Eternals are literally living constructs that they built to police the police the universe and stuff like that you know i'm sure they could build you know before they built starships and stuff for these guys to travel they probably just be like here here's a ring that opens a, a black I hole and you just go through it right because and this is this is part of my evidence but if you watch the eternals movie at the end when erishim the judge shows up and he plucks uh uh whatever what's her face <laughs> uh, uh out of uh, off the earth to go talk to her and be like Mm, you know, you did some shit that I didn't expect, but you know, whatever. We're gonna hold a trial. He opens a black hole behind him and then and just goes through it. That's how he travels. So you know what I mean? That's essentially kind of what the Bengals and stuff do. You know, uh, what, I mean, obviously the rings do something different, but they also ha harness. Uh, it, or at least it looks like they harness uh, uh, different kinds of energy. So like depending on who's wielding them, right? When when the I think it was when Wen Wu was doing it, his were blue, right? And then Shang Chi, when he did it, his were orange. Or it was the other way around. Uh, no, that was why. Okay, so but either way, so now we know the Infinity when the when the universe was created, the Infinity Stones were created, right? And each each Infinity Stone uh, represents a different aspect, right? And also has a different colored glow and so on and so forth because it has different kind of energies. I think depending on who wields them they tap into those different energies, right? Uh, um, magic or so taps into the soul, right? Time, green, right? Or, or, or anything like that. Time and space, green, right? Well, space is purple. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, each one has its diff. And, and if you watch closely, when people wield types of magic, you know, it does change to those colors often. You know, um, and I think when I look at the quantum bands, they kind of do a rainbow, right? And, and also Shang-Chi, when he went full power, they were all the colors, you know? And I think, like, the Celestials, they knew of the infinity stones i mean it even showed the one dude wielding the purple power stone he went uh, in the guardians of the galaxy movie right when he slammed his hammer down and destroyed an entire planet and stuff so they know of it what if they build the technology to harness that specific energy you know modeled off the infinity stones they don't need the stones then because they can just harness the energy through whatever their technology cersei that was her name <laughs> been thinking about that for a while yeah. <laughs> it just popped in my head anyways I mean long story short I think I think it's one of two things it's either you know part of it could be part of like a lead up to Galactus very 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 sketchy on that one but I think it definitely ties into the Celestials 
Um, I, overall, though, I have to say the the new Captain Marvel movie, um, it doesn't deserve all the hate it's getting. Was it great? No. Was it good? Yeah, it was fun. It was entertaining. I enjoyed my my time with it, and when it was over, I was like, well, that was pretty quick, even though it's like a you know two hour movie. Um, it could have used a little bit. I don't know, more fleshing out. Darben was one of the weakest villains uh, in MCU history. I mean, she was about as weak as Ronan the Accuser, and they brought him back twice. Um, she just felt her motives, I get it, you know, they're personal, but it those kind of motives work when you're more down down to earth street level heroes and stuff like that like i want personal revenge against somebody you know when you go on a galactic scale and then you have stupid plans like i'm going to uh open up a portal and suck away your son and replenish my son i mean you, you know that doesn't work or or my planet needs water i'm just going to steal all the water off of this planet and put it on my that could v almost end up destroying your planet because it would rat it, it radically changed the ecosystem and and several other things you know uh, uh imagine your sun is going out it's 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 shrinking you know maybe gravity is getting more intense and then all of a sudden you fill it with energy and it fucking expands and shit like your planet is going to burn to death <laughs> i mean like you know what i mean oh, no, your, yeah. your, your planet has slowly been getting closer to this dying star because it's been getting more dense and more gravity and so on and so forth and then all of a sudden you expand it it's you are going to burn you your atmosphere you're done you just cooked your own planet so not very smart not a great villain and there's a really absurd uh disney musical scene in it uh they go to a planet and the people there can only speak in song and it is literally i mean i'm talking about carol danvers waves her hand and some 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 sparkles appear and suddenly she's in a disney princess dress and everybody's singing and it it was a disney musical <laughs> in, in the middle of this movie they were trying to be funny i guess a lot of that humor What's great about Marvel is when they deliver like a one-liner or a sarcastic remark, it fits, you know, because the general tone of the movie is serious. But when they try to write scenes to be from the beginning, uh, you know, comedy to the end, you know, all the way through, it's so cringy or it feels so fake. Like, it's, you just, I don't know, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't do some of that stuff. But I did love the flurkin scenes. Uh, you had, you had, you know, they brought him back and stuff, and he was oh, eating, gosh. eating a lot. Like, well, he starts eating like everything in sight, right? And at first, you're like, "Wow, man, he, uh, you know, he doesn't do that, right?" Turns out, he's a she, and she's pregnant. And she just gives oh. birth to a bunch of little baby flurkins, and then you know, uh, Nick Fury or one, somebody on the on the station gets the bright idea. Well, we need to evacuate everybody. What's easier, to transport, like, you know, 100,000 people uh, into vari various shuttles, or we just have all the cats, the flurkins, swallow them all inside their little pocket dimensions, and then we just take a handful of cats with us. <laughs> and that's exactly what they do. <laughs> so, and the, the, but that scene is actually funny, because it, it, it had a little bit of James Gunn feel to it, because you have everybody running in slow motion in fear as the, and everybody, and like over the PA is somebody's going, let the cats eat you, you'll be okay, you know, <laughs> people are like no, have you Wait. seen what comes out of their faces? Is, is it Fury saying that? No, it's some like automated oh, message but it's, man, it's great, it Fury. you know it's so, uh it was, that was the best part, honestly that and, uh, there was some really good they didn't, I mean, because you had three main characters, and none of those other characters really had uh, their own movies. What worked in Spider-Man No Way Home, when you had the three Spider-Man, was because you can go back and watch, you know, the Amazing Spider-Man, or you can watch the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies and get to learn, know those characters. So, you have backstory. With the, with the different Mar uh, Marvels here... Yeah, yeah, Monica Rambeau, you really only got to know her in WandaVision. 
and that wasn't very long. It's only ten episodes, right? Yeah. And she's only in only a handful of them, right? Then uh, with Ms. Marvel, you only have her TV show, and then Captain Marvel, you have the one movie, maybe her little sporadic appearances in the other movies. But other than that, you didn't really get to learn them. And so, when they do their moment in the film, like because uh, if you watch WandaVision, you know that Monica was blipped. Her mom died in the meantime. And she's mad that Captain America basically, or Captain America, Captain Marvel never came back to say hello or whatever. She just stayed out in space, right? Well, you know, uh, Captain Marvel has her reasons for it. It's because she destroyed the Supreme Intelligence at the end of the, her, her first movie, which sent the Kree Empire into a civil war for 30 years. So she felt guilty about that and was trying to fix it, you know, for the last, you know, whatever. And so that's why she hasn't been back. Okay, you know, and they have like a heart to heart movement and builds up to it and stuff like that. I mean, t uh, first of all, Tiana Paris is amazing at Spectrum. I want more of her. <laughs> uh, um, I, uh, uh, and so is, uh, um, oh, fuck. I can't remember. She was in James Bond. She plays the mom. The mom in James Bond? No, no. She plays, she plays, plays the mom. Uh, she plays uh, Captain Marvel's best friend, uh, uh, Maria Rambo. Um, she was, but she also played in, in the last James Bond movie. She was uh, 007. Well, whatever. She's also amazing, and she made she's made now two appearances in superhero form. One, Multiverse of Madness, where she was Captain Marvel in that universe, and now a second appearance in uh, in the Marvels as Binary, which was awesome. Uh, however, this one now uh, at the end credits uh, or at the end of the movie. Basically, you know, a villain made rifts, made holes in space, right? Uh, Spectrum, you know, Monica Rambeau is like, yo, I gotta, I can patch these. I have the, the power, right? Um, but I gotta be on the other side when I do it. Captain Marvel's like, yo, that's not cool. I'm gonna pull you out right beforehand, right? Uh, you know, long story short, she gets trapped on the other side. She's in another universe, right? That universe has the X-Men. Oh, you know, shit. At first, everybody thinks, oh, it's the 838 universe, the same one from Multiverse of Madness. No, because two reasons. A, kept, again, uh, 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 Maria Rambo was Captain Marvel in the 838 universe, not binary. And B, we saw Professor X die. He's alive in, in this universe. So, it's not the 838. Um, but we get Kelsey Grammer back as Beast. Which is Kelsey Grammer's going to be B. Yeah, it Wait. was awesome. Perfect. Perfect casting. Um, but anyways, uh, in this universe also, binary, you know, Maria Rambeau never had a daughter. So, first of all, you got Monica. She wakes up in a hospital bed all freaked out, and she's like, Mom, oh my God, Mom, and, and stuff. And she's like crying, and they tell her everything she wanted to tell her, and stuff like that. And, and, and binary is just kind of like, who the heck? Hell are you? You know what I mean? And stuff like that. She thinks that she's some sort of imposter or whatever and stuff like that. Now, they don't, they talk, they say, well, we're going to talk to Professor X. We're going to run some tests and figure this shit out, right? And then they kind of show the planet itself from, from you know, space. And it's got a red atmosphere. Like something is breaking it down. I think, I'm not sure. But I think this is the same universe from X-Men Last Stand, uh, um, you know, uh, or the Days of Future Past timeline, I should say, uh, and an incursion has happened, and those are the X-Men we're going to get. Okay. From that universe. We'll see. I, don't, I mean, I didn't see Deadpool or nothing show up or something like that. Deadpool 3 is the next film coming out, so maybe, maybe it'll, we see a red skyline in his movie. Well, he's, you know, then we know. But either way, I'm excited. They're bringing back Kelsey Grammer's Beast. <laughs> it was the one thing I liked about X Men Last Stand. He was the only, only ver I mean, um, I don't know who they had play him in. I, it was X Men Two United. Uh, I forgot who they had him, but they only showed him on TV for real quick, and it was some random guy. Or well, not some random guy. It was an actor, but. You know, I, I don't remember him, but once in X-Men Last Stand, when you got to meet him, I was like, he's perfect. He, he got the, the, the voice down, the tonal, whatever, and stuff like that, the demeanor, everything. You know, Beast Beast can battle and, he, and, he, and be ferocious, but he's also, uh, you know, 
much like Fraser Crane, very yeah, sophisticated and aristocratic, and you know, and it, and it just works, you know. Um, so we'll see, and we know that he's alive again because at the end of like Days of Future Past, you know, when Logan goes back into the to the future, <laughs> he's all yeah, he's he's you know you have Beast or Hank whatever walking down the oh, Logan, you know, doing his thing. So whatever. Um, one thing I do want to touch on. This kind of bugged me. So, if you've seen Secret Invasion, this wasn't the greatest show ever. And it kind of left a lot to be desired. Now, the only connection that the that the Marvels and the, the Secret Invasion show have are in Secret Invasion... Um, oh, I forgot what his name is. The, the main scroll guy. Not Scrollos. Um... Oh, man, I'm forgetting everything today. Uh, anyways, the guy tells Nick on the train, you know, uh, he brought all the million scrolls to Earth except for the ones in this other dude's uh, uh, empire, right? The, like, there was a group of, like, religious skulls, uh, skulls, skulls, skrulls, who found a planet that they settled on, and they want, and they're doing their thing. They're like the Amish section of the scrolls, right? They're, they got their place. Everybody else came to Earth, right, that didn't want to be part of it. You see that place in the Marvels. And then it gets destroyed. So, that's it. <laughs> Outside of that, any of the ramifications from Secret Wars or so, or Secret Invasion, none of it makes rears its head. Nick Fury doesn't seem phased by anything that happened. He's happy to go lucky, go back to Earth, go back to space, do whatever he wants. The... Uh, at the end of Secret Invasion, you had the president literally going and saying, we will hunt you down. Yeah, well, the refugees from that planet, like I just said, uh, 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 Ms. Marvel packs them up, whatever, the ones who survived, and brings them to New Asgard, which is in Ohio. So apparently they don't have any any kind of anything in place to, to stop alien races from living on Earth. They just, it's like they, either they weren't, when they, when they wrote and did both movies, they weren't like they changed the ending or something uh, when, for for the show or for whatever, you know, or they just kind of like say, "Well, man, people hated Secret Invasion. We're just gonna kind of pretend it didn't happen." Like, I don't know, uh, but it it just it was kind of dumb. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, oh, and then of course the very final scene is uh ms marvel is forming the young avengers and the first person on that roster is k yeah so now you know i'm a i'm i'm not a big fan of teenage superhero teams i didn't i, I mean i grew up with them on tv but i didn't care for teen titans I, I certainly don't care for, for the Young Avengers and stuff. It's not because, oh, you know, whatever. Uh, they're just copycats or any of that. I just, I never connected with them. I, I liked the adult superheroes more, you know, when it came to... I mean, that doesn't mean I, did, I hated all teenage characters in superhero movies. Because, I, I mean, obviously the X-Men, I love the X-Men. And, I mean, yeah, most of them are teens. Yeah. But it's, like a, it's like a mixture, though. It's not like all teens. But they behave like adults and had adult situations, whereas the Young Avengers, I don't know. I, I just, I just, it's cringe humor, and I just I can't do it. So, I'm, am I looking forward to it? Not really. Um, I wonder who's going to lead the team. You know, obviously Ms. Marvel's the one going around pulling a Nick Fury and recruiting everybody, but... Well, like, I don't think it's going to be, like, 100%, like, all teens, like, for the new Avengers. If anything, if anybody, I think, would lead it, it's probably going to be new Captain. You think so? Yeah. Uh, I, think I also hope they don't call them the Young Avengers. Like, I, I don't... Just, I'm mean, not going to call them the Young Avengers. Call yourself... Well, you never know with the titles and yeah. stuff. They might do it in the movies. The Young Avengers, you know. Um, who knows? I mean, if they call themselves the Avengers, eh, whatever, I guess. The Avengers have had multiple lineups and stuff like that, so that's... You know, the team roster changes all the time, right? Um, I don't want them to call themselves the West Coast Avengers either. That was, you know, it was a cool comic series, you know, but... I think they're just going to go with New Avengers. You think so? I think it's just going to be New Avengers. It's going to be like Cap, She-Hulk, Yelena. 
And then Kate Bishop. I don't see She-Hulk joining. I, I don't see her joining any team because she really doesn't want to be a superhero. Yelena, I mean, we know she's first going to be on the on the Thunderbolts. Um, you know, yeah. Because she's getting recruited for that. Uh, I do see Falcon, or Cap, new Cap, uh, joining. Or, I don't know if he's leading. I think I think they're going to make Carol Danvers the leader. Uh, yeah. I mean... Uh, I would ask, like, probably the leader, but not really, like, the leader. You know what I mean? Like, not on the field. I don't know. See, I feel like... I feel like what's going to happen is they're going to have more than one team, right? Remember, like, in the comics, you have also the Defenders, right? Which was, like, Hulk, Doctor Strange, and so on and so forth. And then you have the Midnight Suns with Wolverine and Nightcrawler, you know, whatever. I think that they're going to start branching that off. I know for 100% can guarantee that they're creating the Midnight Suns, especially with the, the characters that they're bringing in. You know, not just the, the werewolf by night, but, uh, you you know... You, ha- you already have Doctor Strange in it. Then now you have Clea. Then you have... Uh, um, uh, uh, why can't I think of... You have Cersei. Uh, uh, you have Wolverine coming. You know. Uh, I, I, 100% that they're creating the Midnight Suns. You know. Um, I think that people like... Uh, because I don't know what the show Armor Wars, if that's even going to happen still, but I don't know what that's going to... I know they're going to be hunting down Riri Williams to get her technology or something like that, but I think that Sam Wilson, Rhodey, and so forth, the remaining adults, the, the, the technology <laughs> guys, Bruce Banner, and so I think they're going to form their own little... Like their own little like combat team, like, like, yeah. like science combat team, because I feel like as much as uh, uh, you know, Sam has taken on now the Captain America role. He is much like Rhodey in the sense that he still is beholden to the government. He's not like he's not like Steve who was like, screw the government. Not like Tony, who was just like, I'll do what I want, even though I pretend to be part of the government. You know? They still look to them for guidance, you know? I mean, Sam was a soldier. Yeah, you know I was what I mean? literally just about to say that. Yeah, yeah. he was, you know, he still believes in that creed that he took, you know? I feel like maybe like the Thunderbolts movie, you know, they'll, they'll continue being the Thunderbolts, but under new caps leadership they'll, they'll kick the crap out of the people like u.s agent and stuff be like no man you gotta go you you you're a shithead you know and then he takes over as the new leader of the thunderbolts and then that lineup will be you know sam wilson cap uh, uh yelena belova black widow uh, red guardian yeah either red hulk or scar one yeah. of the two right uh um Rhodey as war machine or the new iron man or iron patriot whatever he ends up calling himself right and so, like that'll be the new that's that's the thunderbolts lineup the heavy combat team and then you'll have the avengers or whatever which will be the more super powered people right? yeah so you'll have like domestic affairs and then we go into space <laughs> you know what i mean like i think that's what they're gonna do i need you guys to go get a file otherwise you know over on planet because there's no <laughs> announcement for guardians of the galaxy fourth film or anything like they don't seem like they're going to continue that franchise or anything so then the Avengers will become the spacefaring, you know, the Guardians, the new ones, basically, yeah. while then Thunderbolts will be the Earth base. I think that's how that's going to play out, at least in my, in my head, you know, because it makes the most sense, you know. Uh, and then as far as, like, multiversal reality hopping time travel shit, that'll be the Midnight Suns. They'll be dealing with all the supernatural, magical bullshit, you know. So you have each one... You know, defending an aspect, and then they, you know, and then maybe down the line, after Secret Wars, you know, they form they if if they have to when there's a universal threat, or maybe during Secret Wars or whatever, you know, then they're like, let's all team up into one ultimate team. <laughs> we bring our knowledge of the supernatural, of of you know, heavy military combat and space, you know, whatever into one unit. Like I think that's kind of how they're gonna. That do makes that. sense. Um, but that's all I have for the Marvels. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. Um, oh, I did it again. <laughs> this is. Uh, there we go. Um, oh, I did have a little hot take, but I already brought it up before about Doctor Doom coming into the into the universe. It's too early for Doctor Doom. Too early. Um, let's see. What about uh, what about movies that we've seen recently? Uh, uh, or, uh, sorry, I should say trailers that we've seen recently of movies coming out soon. Um, what are some of your favorites? What are you looking forward to? Um, so I know we have a couple written down. So the ones I know, I, I watched them this morning. The new Airbender movie, I'm actually excited about. I never really watched the... Is it a movie or is it a show? It's going to be a show, I think. Okay. I think it's, yeah, it's going to be a show. But definitely already, like, the first, like, five minutes, seconds of, like, watching it, I'm like, oh, thank God. Like, they're actually, like, doing it justice. Like, I'm not going to say, like, I'm a huge Avatar fan or anything like that. Like, I've seen, you know, a couple seasons. But I have seen the last movie, and... Uh, <laughs> I mean, the worst thing about the last movie was it's a movie about people doing martial arts, and, or even what, and so people go, well, you know, mar dance is martial arts. That's very true, but when I'm gonna throw a rock at you in combat, I don't slowly raise it off the ground so you can watch it going up, and then it hits me in the face. It should have been like the sh like if you watch the cartoon, man, he's like, boom, bam, you know, yeah. throwing rocks and shit like that. That's what the movie needed, like. Not this, you know, doing the movement, Swap slowly words. raising it off Not the ground, here. and then, eh, you know, <laughs> like, you know that, that didn't work for me, you know. But no, I'm actually really, really... Yeah, they do, it does look a lot better as far as that department goes. And then um, I'm also a really big fan, I don't know how you feel about them, but a fan of the new Planet of the Apes films. I'm actually really geeked for that. I'm curious now, uh, uh, so... I, I, the way it looks is this is going to lead to like this will be either the final film in the quadrilogy or the prequel quadrilogy leading up directly to right before the Charlton Heston movie where he time travels and arrives because they just that one scene where they're on the horses along the beach and they come across some structures and I'm like that's got to be the Statue of Liberty you know yeah. right now being run or by teasing it. run run by. <laughs> The, the King Gorilla Man guy who was like, it's a glorious day! You know, <laughs> that guy, I think that's his kingdom. They're going to battle it out and stuff like that, take it out and, and everything, and then, you know, start enslaving whatever humans are left around and stuff, because we saw that too, right? They throw them the little bolo lines and, and nets and stuff, right? And I'm really hoping that orangutan is Dr. Zayas. Yeah? I really hope it is. Uh, who is that voice? I recognize that voice, but I, 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 didn't I haven't, know, I haven't looked, looked at yet. the cast yet. But, oh... Uh, I'm curious because it sounded really familiar, you know. And then what? What is Caesar's son's name too? Because he's that's he's the that, main that, guy. He's yeah. I, I know Caesar's Caesar. son, and I yeah. forgot Caesar's son's name. Because yeah, oh, I want to say it was like he looked like he was on his own though. Like he was cast. I mean, not necessarily cast out, but probably just like took off on his own. Like the, right, like, like he's like, on his own quest like i'm doing like i'm gonna do my own thing like my father did and i'm just gonna go and probably probably as just as much as his father did probably has sympathy for these now primitive looking as humans uh probably is probably trying to help you know help them out and it's probably going against the kingdom right because his father did always teach we could live together yeah and it seems like the rest of the apes whatever territories they're in have been like no <laughs> humans humans are garbage but it also looks like they forgot like enough time has passed that they forgot the human world or much of it because like there's that scene where he goes into the observatory right and he sees the uh, the the big telescope or when they're in the factory and they're looking around and they're like what is this place like enough time has passed i don't know how long apes live but enough time has passed that they forgot. But, like, it can't be, like, I would have to give, because, like, it's Caesar's son, so I have to give it, like, because it's not like he was, like, a baby last time we saw him. Like, no, he was. Like, he, he the was, other one died, I think. The older son died. No, he lived. Did he? Yeah, he lived. No, like, he was, like, older and old enough to, like, run around and help out with everything. Like, he wasn't, like, a baby baby. That was like the um, 
That was the second movie that he was like a baby. Well, and then, I could have sworn he died during uh, when because uh, uh, it was like his friend. I think it was one that died. Oh, um, because I know they were out like, like uh, whatever, and then the one dude got all nervous and shot, and shot the. Uh, 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 oh yeah. When they were whatever, they, the because the apes were hunting. Because they were running oh, through that building and all that, like that really nice, like man. Yeah, because they were already riding like horses at that point. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know. I, I'll have to go back and rewatch. I it. have to go back and rewatch. <laughs> <it. Yeah. laughs> it's, it's been a minute. I'm I mean, like, wait, is he? I think that? the last one came out what, like 2016, 2017? I want to say like 20. It came out a while. Like, like 2015, maybe. Yeah, it came out like a while. 2015, 2016. That's, that sounds about right. So, but I'm I am hyped. I do want to see it. It looks really cool. Um... I also want to see Ghostbusters. Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad that they're bringing back the original cast. Yes. Uh, I'm hyped for that. You know, everybody's like, oh, you know, nostalgia. I don't care. I don't care. It's Ghostbusters. Yeah, it's Ghostbusters. Exactly. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, and yeah, what's what I like, everybody's like, well, I don't know about the villain and stuff, like, all this and then, like, there's people already bitching and stuff, right? But check it out. It makes sense. Ghostbusters, what do they do? They, they zap ghosts, trap them, keep them in a, in a locked cage in their basement, right? Death is coming. He's like, yo, you keep stealing souls from me. I want them back. It makes sense to me. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's like, dude, I'd you're, rather, you're, you're I, I like this, up my style, man. Right, I like this better than bringing Zool back again. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like, don't get me wrong, Zool, cool, and stuff like that. But it makes sense that Death would finally show up and be like, all right, you guys, you know, Give me those souls. I'll take them back to hell. Like, he's not even really a villain. I mean, he can't help it that things die around him. He's deaf. You know? <laughs> it's just one job. And I think that's kind of how it's going to end. You know? Like, that death is, like, not really bad. You know? He's coming. Like, he's whatever. You know? I, I think it'll be cool, though. It looks really cool. Um, Fargo. I don't know if you watch Fargo. I have not watched Fargo. So, is it... Like every season is like a new story kind of a thing. Yeah. So okay, cool. Fargo. The original movie took place in whatever, movie. right? Okay. Movie. So then the first season took place right before that movie, leading up to why that briefcase was buried in the snow. Remember, uh, 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 so re remember, uh, not sorry. Uh, who took the briefcase or who who took the money in the first place, right? So remember when when Steve Buscemi, you know, got shot in the face and then he goes and buries his money. Yeah. In the snow. Okay. So it, it takes place about that, like who found the money, right? And then the second season takes place before the first season about those those characters, and then so on and so forth. You know, um, I think season four went back s to the 1960s. You know, so it went back pretty far. I season five, however, looks like it's modern day again. Yeah. Um, but. It, it looks interesting. <laughs> it's just the the because it's such a it's a it's a show about serial or about murder and stuff. So it is a serious show, but in this super darkly comedic. If if you guys haven't seen any of the Fargo stuff, I hardly me I definitely recommend the film. The film is amazing. Uh, I definitely recommend seasons one and two. Season three and four were good. I mean, the show overall is really good quality. Um, but it depends on whether or not you like uh, mobster tales, you know, like, you know, stories about, like, like, because it's basically, it's the mafia, but the mafia in the Midwest. You know what I mean? They're like the middle, they're the, they're the, 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 the money launderers for the money coming from Las Vegas back to the East Coast. That's essentially what the mob is doing there in the middle okay. of, like, North Dakota and shit. You know what I mean? So, a lot of it revolves around that and then people screwing each other and whatever, right? Uh, but the first season is literally just a random murder mystery with a hitman involved. I don't want to go into any details and spoil it for people who haven't seen it. And then the second season involves UFOs. Okay. So, <laughs> so Wait, is there, an, is there an actual UFO or is it just people going like, Man, there's something up there, man. Like, uh, I can't uh, tell you without okay. spoiling it, yeah. but there is a really messed up. There is, it's a, it's a huge gunfight going on at a motel, and it stops because something arrives. And that's all I'm gonna say, because. <laughs> 
and it, and it blows Something my mind. Something arrives. And, right. and it blew my mind because you're just sitting there going, whoa, you know. And then it continues on from there. And, and it just, it's great. Why do I feel like when you say something arrives, like I'm going to be expecting a UFO, but nothing, it's just a pizza delivery car. There's, there's, <laughs> what's, one of, this, I mean, I, this is kind of a spoiler. So if you don't want to hear this, turn off your camera, you know, or not turn off your camera, but hit pause on the video, skip forward a couple seconds, whatever, right? But anyways, there's a character in the first season, old white guy eating lobster. They show him his like uh, his origins in the second season because it takes place before the first season. He's actually a Native American man who had cosmetic surgery to turn himself into a fat white guy. It's it's amazing. There's a lot of stuff <laughs> in the show that is just what? just amazing. So, um, anyways, what about like, what about some more movies too? I I've already seen some of these. I saw The Killer. I've seen Dream Scenario, and I've seen a one. It's a Wonderful Knife. Have you seen any of these? I have not yet. I've been meaning to see The Killer. All my friends have been telling me uh, about how good it is. That one's on streaming, so you can see that one yes. now without having to go to theaters. Yeah. It's really good. Michael Fassbender, I've been, amazing. Where have you been? Yeah, right. Uh, David Fincher, if you're familiar with his work, he did movies like Seven, Alien 3, Mind Hunter, etc. Uh, Fight Club is probably his most famous. Right. His style and attention to detail and stuff amazing sorry get the hiccups amazing and the killer is a no slouch it is it is a good movie i won't spoil it for anybody dream scenario is a comedy with horror elements and the horror is psychological right i mean there are some moments in the in like some of the dreams are like you know like i would be i'd wake up screaming if nicholas cage was coming after me like this down a hallway as the hallway was shrinking you know like that would terrify the hell out of me you know especially if i've never seen him before in my life i'd be like what you know and stuff and then all of a sudden you see this guy on tv and he's real you know what i mean like i don't want to spoil anything beyond that i mean that's pretty much what you learn from the trailers but there is it it really dives deep into uh like a, a meta commentary about the psychological uh, aspect of uh, when it comes to be like social media famous and, and stuff like a lot of people uh, you know you had uh, uh, the the Jedi kid remember him on, on YouTube oh uh, the big guy dancing and the, but it like yes it was he was famous for it but it also destroyed his life that's essentially what dream scenario is about this guy is getting famous for something but it's destroying his life at the same time, and it's it's really dark and it gets really moody. Like famous for all the wrong reasons, or like I mean, yeah. like like he did something and got recorded and he's famous because of it, or he did something on purpose and he put it out there. No, 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 no. It's it's he's not doing it on purpose. These people are. It's just a. Ra it's something that's randomly happening. Gotcha. You know, but yeah. he runs with it at first until it starts becoming an issue, and then he can't undo it. It's it's the, the you know Pandora's out of the box. And so it turns, it, it's still a dark comedy. Um, if you're a fan of like Charlie Kaufman movies and stuff like Eternal Sunshine and stuff like yeah. that, it's kind of like in that vein where it's like, it seems great and then it's not great, you know? So it's really good. And then It's a Wonderful Knife. Great opening, great ending. Uh, middle, whatever. Justin Long hams, hams it up in this movie. Good creative kills. Uh, if you're looking for a fun uh, Christmas themed horror movie definitely go see it um, I, I recommend it I don't know if it's streaming I thought it was supposed to come out in streaming at the same time as in theaters or if it's like a, just a short delay or something um, I'm, I think it might be available on Amazon Prime already as part of their you know like where you can rent movies that are in theaters already yeah I think it's on there but I don't know I'm not for sure uh, I saw it in uh, I saw it in theaters, so it was good. It was it was fun. It was it was worth seeing. Um, and then oh yeah, and so the Echo trailer too. Uh, it's not a movie, but uh, badass. I love the Netflix Daredevil and the Net Netflix Punisher series and Luke Cage and Jessica Jones Iron Fist. Uh, I, I did want to see what was going on though at the end of Iron Fist season two when he got the gun foo. You know, instead of his, you know what I mean? I yeah. was like, hell yeah! Like, let's see where this goes. You know, and then nothing, of course. But um, 
you know, I do like that darker, gritty part of the, the street heroes and stuff like that. And Echo being Marvel, Disney Marvel, first TVMA, sounds awesome. You know, uh, D'Onofrio as Kingpin. Amazing. Amazing. So after seeing that trailer, hunt. And the fact that it's coming out in January, awesome. Happy birthday to me. Right. Because uh, uh, there's usually not a lot of stuff. that come. I never understood this. Uh, let me rant for a second. But why do they release movies or TV shows or movies during times when everybody's busy? Like they release all, like show after show, of, all at the same time, like all in the same days and stuff stacked on each other. And then during like winter season when I can't go outside, I can't go anywhere, I can't, I'm going to be freezing my ass off. So I'm going to sit at home on, you know, in my chair with my blanket and stuff like that. Ain't shit on TV. <laughs> I never show it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> no, I know. All the good shows. So you have I'm, to go out and actually go and see it or go and get it or right. whatever. Or you got to watch something that, that you've already seen over the summer because if you're one of those people who keeps up with it right away, then, you know, whatever. So I'm. that's why I'm glad, like, Echo's coming out in January because otherwise January, I looked at some of the release, the, the schedule coming out uh, for shows and stuff coming out, and it's, like, dead. Uh, a lot of reality TV. If you're into that, cool. You know what I mean? But I can't. I get enough reality. I just scroll my no my news feed on Facebook, and that's all the reality I need. I'm a bartender. I get enough reality. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, anything else you want to talk about? Any other movies or any other? So, I did see a trailer for <laughs> this one movie, which I think is going to finally do it justice, even though it's, like, so random. But I don't know if it's even random anymore. I saw the trailer for the new Garfield movie. Wow. Yeah. I have not seen that. <laughs> you have not seen that? It actually looks really good, and it's actually, like, not, like, the Bill Murray Garfield, like, live action with little CGI cat. It's all, like, you know, all computer animated. Okay, so... And it's actually true to the animation. Okay, okay. So it actually looks really, really good. Chris Pratt is Garfield. <laughs> I was waiting for that. I, I don't... See, I don't have a beef with him. I, I grew up... Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen a show, Everwood. No, I haven't. It was like no. early 2000s, right? I, wa I So that was Chris Pratt's like breakout role. He played this doofus uh, jock uh, named Bright Abbott yeah, uh, who had a sister who the main character of the show was in love with, right? But over time, he, you know, you develop this kind of like attachment to Bright. He gets, he stops becoming, or stops being an asshole and starts becoming more of a likable character. Kind of like how, uh, his other character, Andy Dwyer, was a Parks and Rec, right? Yeah. And so, you know, he starts off as a doofus, but then you, you know, really like him and you love his relationship, you know, and you root for him and stuff like that. So I have no problem, and I loved him as Star Lord. But they are putting him in everything. I know, that's what I was saying. Like, it's not like he's not doing a bad job, but he's just everywhere. Yeah. And he's he's got range, but he's not very versatile. It's always Chris Pratt, you know? And. <laughs> you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like I said, there's some movies out there. I mean, one of my favorites with him in it that's very underrated performance from him is Zero Dark Thirty. Oh, yeah. Right? He plays just a regular Marine guy going in to kill Osama bin Laden. You know what I mean? And and it's, he's not very Chris Pratt in it. You know, he's just, you know, he does a good job. But, but when he's front and center, he's Chris Pratt. <laughs> yeah. Like, he's not on, like, the... I always say this about Tom Cruise. It's always Tom Cruise playing Tom Cruise. I wouldn't say it's that level, but I, no, I understand. Right. That's why I can't take certain movies with him seriously. I mean, Miss Mission Impossible, fucking amazing. That is Tom Cruise. I love seeing Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible. But then there's The Mummy. And I was like, I can't unsee Tom Cruise. Yeah. It's Tom this movie Cruise. is not scary because there's Tom Cruise. He's going to get a motorcycle at some point with, you know, whatever, do some sort of stunt, and he's going to take out the mummy. You know, yeah. like, I just know exactly. what's going to happen. That's exactly what's going to happen. That's yeah. why, like, I don't really, except for, like, Mission Impossible movies, like, I really don't go see Tom Cruise movies. Yeah, no. Except for, like, probably the only time I've seen Tom Cruise not be Tom Cruise is probably Tropic Thunder. That movie's amazing. <laughs> And he literally had to put on makeup and a yeah. full Les suit. Les Grossman. <laughs> literally, fuck you in the face. <laughs> no. uh, yeah, I love that movie. Um, you know who would have been good voice, though, for, for Garfield? Bill Hader. Oh, that would have been amazing. He just... I love The Bill man Hader. is very... I mean, 
I get it. Acting wise, the man can't keep a straight face. He cracks up every scene, and like he, he mu- he's. They say he's. It's not that he's a difficult actor to work with. It's just difficult to get a take done because he loses his shit in there, you know. But the man can do impressions and everything. I mean, it is it is phenomenal. Him doing a voice for Garfield would have been would have been great. That would have been amazing. I, but I have to check that trailer out. I have not seen Samuel it. Jackson comes in and he's Garfield's dad that comes out of nowhere. No way. Yeah, so it's like Garfield and his dad, Samuel L. Jackson. What about, what's what's the gray cat's name? I forgot the gray cat's name. Is he is he in it? A, 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 I haven't seen. You does only Odie see, have a voice? Odie did, so far does not have a voice. Which Odie never really had a voice. No, that's true. Yeah, that's why. But you know, sometimes they give voices to characters where you're like, "What?" You know. I feel like that would hit the forums pretty bad. It was like, "Why the fuck does Odie talk?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Odie does I, not talk. I can see that. And you had him play him. Who plays? Who plays the owner, John? Um, I don't know who plays John. They only showed Chris Pratt, Samuel Jackson, Garfield. Should be Jack Whitehall playing John. <laughs> Uh, if you if you guys have uh, don't know I who that is, you got to see Clifford the Big Red Dog, the live action movie. Or check out his stand up on Netflix. That, it's he's hilarious. also hilarious on there. But yeah, Jack Whitehall as John would make sense. He even has the haircut already. <laughs> <laughs> true, but like I said, it's all uh, computer animated. That's true. So, but um, any other ones you want to talk about? That's that's the one. I was like, I was like, I saw it. I'm like, I gotta talk about that in the podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'll have to I'll have to look it up. Uh, there's so many so many great films coming out though. Uh, th- the last thing I want to say is uh, this is something I, I I saw yesterday, so I didn't have a chance to write it in the notes. But Marvel pushed back almost every release date for their films. It looks like Deadpool is the only MCU movie releasing next year. Really? Oh yeah. And probably the strike, but maybe. The strike ended, which the is, first ended, of all, congratulations to all of you out there that the strike has ended. That's that's amazing to hear. Uh, looking forward to working with some of you, hopefully in the future. But, um, yeah, no, like, they, I, I think it's more because Kevin Feige got promoted now, right? Mm-hmm. Again. <laughs> and so now, not only is he head of, like, Marvel movies, but, like, the Marvel comic brand and everything, right? So, I think he's cleaning up. That before he had his fingers in pies, but then you had the Disney execs going, "We need to do this and this because we got to sell toys here and stuff." I think Kevin Feige just stepped in and was like, "No, we need to get back to some quality storytelling." I think they might announce movies like in the coming year, uh, 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 you know, in the coming months, I should say, about that. Are, like, I I feel like two Marvel movies a year, one at the beginning and one at the end, and then like a show in between is perfect. I think that's enough Marvel in a year. More than that is too much. You know. They might want to put one out in the summer because more people are more... And like I, and let me let me clarify when I say one show. I, I say one show. I know that Echo is coming out in January, but I mean one show that like ties directly into the movies. Uh, if they want to put out you know, X Men '97 or What If season two or something in between. You know that are more the animated styles and stuff like that. That's fine. Marvel can put out as many animated and other current, you know shows that they want. And I know we're getting, as far as Marvel non MCU, we're getting Venom three, and Craven uh, uh, the Hunter. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. I'm gonna that. see it, but it's yeah. like nah. I mean, I know we're getting those too, so those are technically Marvel movies and with the whole multiverse thing, I mean, who knows how that ties in. Um But as far as like mainline MCU, right now the only official movie that has a release date is Deadpool and I'm pretty sure it got pushed back too. It did get pushed back. Right. So curious to see what their plans are coming up now. You know, I, I don't know if it has anything to do with them restructuring because, like I said, you had that uh, issue. Uh, Variety magazine apparently they put pu- they published an article about a bunch of stuff that was you know leaked email and information and stuff about Disney. Now a bunch of that also got debunked. So take that with a grain of salt. What is actually true or not? But you had the 
the thing about Jonathan Majors and whether or not they were going to replace Kang. And then, like I said, then you had the whole thing about Kevin Feige being promoted and then wanting to get Marvel back on track with more quality and less quantity and, and stuff. I, I, I don't know what else plays in the role. Could be the strike, you know, that they had to, you know, they're like, all right, you know what, now that the strike is over, we can uh, redo some of these films, you know, a little bit with more creative input, more creative Less less control and, and whatever. Yeah. So I, I don't know. We'll see. Um, I'm still looking forward to seeing it. I was I'm not a huge Deadpool fan, uh, uh, but the movies are great. <laughs> um, I thought the movies were fun. Like I, I have no I, you know no negatives about about them really. You know. Um, I hope it does well. I hope it really, you know, does what everybody's hoping it does and and and. Bring, merges the the Fox universe with the MCU universe in a, in a in a way that makes sense and makes you want to watch more movies and stuff like that. I, I don't think it's going to be the golden ticket that everybody is ma- hyping it up to be. That it's going to be like the movie to watch uh, to understand everything like that. Um, Multiverse of Madness wasn't it, and Quantum Mania sure as hell wasn't it. You know, I don't think Deadpool three is going to be it either. I think it's not going to culminate until we get movies, until we get the Avengers Kang Dynasty movie, you know, unless they come up with, you know, unless they suddenly, you know, say, oh shit, we're dropping an X-Men movie now, you know, before that movie comes out, and, or, and we're dropping in, you know, a Thunderbolts comes out, and then we're going to do this one, which also deals directly with the multi, you know, unless they start doing, like, announcing projects like that, I don't think anything is really going to build up the multiverse like be that I have to see this movie to understand you know Secret Wars until Kang Dynasty yeah I don't think anything is going to set up that otherwise sure well like we said we had Loki and and whatnot, which we think will all that stuff will play into it all those after credit scenes like the uh, the one from the Marvels and so forth I'm sure all that will play into it but it won't be definitive yet until then so, anyways, uh, before we go, I just want to give a shout out to We Are Making Another Film, right, called Raw Appetite. Um, it's a zombie film. I don't really want to spoil too much about it, but in the next couple of months, we will be launching a Kickstarter. We already have a GoFundMe uh, going, but we do want to launch an official Kickstarter. We're waiting for a few things to fall into place before we do so. But we hope that you guys, who, uh, uh, you know, who support us already, continue to support us by helping, you know, donate, sharing the link, whatever, getting getting it out there. That is uh, one thing I would really appreciate. Um, also, if you're new to the channel, make sure you like, share, subscribe. Every we're we're, we're pretty pretty close to our, our original goal of 250. I think we're going to hit 250 before the end of the year. Hey. Uh, so the next goal after that will be 500. We would love to. Uh, make sure to hit that before February. It would be nice. But every new subscriber who joins, you know, keeps us motivated, keeps us coming back, doing more content for you guys. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, don't be afraid to let us know in the comments of stuff you want to hear us talk about. You know, we, we love consuming movies and games, and, you know, I, I, uh, uh, there's lots of topics I want to talk about and stuff like that, but we want to know what you guys want to hear about, you know. I could spend all day talking about stuff. Same. Same. Like, <laughs> you pretty know, much anything's, uh, anything's up for grabs. Like, we'll talk about anything. Yeah, so let us know. And, um, yeah, I mean, uh, I would say that's about, that's about covers it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've been your host, Raging Anybody. No BBITW89. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Peace. Deuces. <laughs>